I've got an absolutely massive mailbag here. I, I don't know, only items I do, a dozen items, something like that. Um, this is like two weeks worth. Now this is a review item. We get to see this in a little bit of detail of this type of video, and then I'll be doing a video just on this item. And there's a couple of other items in here which also review items or sponsorship things, so um, but I can tell there's a few things going on anyway. <laughs> Let's check it out. This is going to be interesting. There's a lot of stuff in here. Make sure you stick around. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. All that sort of stuff. Check out the merch. Here we've got so much stuff this time. I have to move the camera further away to try and get in a shot. <laughs> Thanks to my Patreon supporters. You all appreciate it. You help me to buy things from our bag. Such as this massive score I've got today. Even at 14. Usually they're pretty good with the website saying what's in and out of stock. But this time it looks like this stuff is out of stock. So I didn't get everything older. Here is one of the things. It's a Caddock 10 meg resistor network. Now this is a 1000 to 1 resistor. Use this as a divider, voltage divider. So this is actually, in theory, very much like what I'm doing with my boards I'll be making. Okay, so very much like this, where I'm using individual resistors with a 1000 volt capability. This is, I think it can handle, I think it's 1400 volts, this can handle something like that, um, peak. This resistor can do like this pretty much with this own array here and a second array there, but it's built into a ceramic. And these are CADIC, so these are high precision. I think it's 0.01% or something like that. It's pretty precise. Also very expensive. This particular resistor was over $100. I just want to get one and try it out. Actually, I've ordered a couple of different types. So this is the more expensive one. The cheaper one, strangely, isn't in stock at the moment. So hope it will turn up eventually. But this might be another revision of this board I'm making. So I'm doing a few different revisions of this. So I've already got a second revision on the way. The boards will be here soon. Although by the time you see this video, I would have already done it. You would have seen it. So it should be in the past. So you'll see the boards made and done before you see me receive them. Okay, you got that? Right. Time travel, isn't it great? Because <laughs> I've got so many mailbag videos queued up, it's ridiculous. I'm too far ahead. I'm trying to catch up. Well, I'm trying to not catch up, I should say. Quite expensive resistor. High precision. And um, what I might end up doing is making a, a variation of this board using this resistor. We'll see. I, I might do. I might just do it on a bit of variable board and give it a try and see how well it works before I commit to that. Because um, if it's something I'm going to release to people, then I might find that people won't really want to do this one because it's too expensive. Whereas this way is pretty cheap, which is why I wanted to look at this way. This is a really cheap way of doing it. Um, even using high quality resistors is still a lot cheaper than using one of these. Mechanic. Uh, okay, I think I know what that is. It's another iPhone repair tool thing. This is like a power cable. Because the ones I've got are a bit old now. I thought I'd get some newer ones. We've got some newer fittings on, so you've got USB fittings on here. A plug into the main power block. And you've got different like battery connections and stuff like that on them, so you can hook them straight into a phone to so substitute it as a battery. Now, this doesn't have a voltage regulator built in it, I think. Wait if I power it off of. DC jack, maybe it will. I think that if you use this one, it goes straight enough to check that actually. You plug all these things in at once if you want, and you can get a whole bunch of them. You can jump on the side, I'm sure that's for, and micro USB power too. Push the button and you turn the thing on and off. So it's basically a battery substitution unit, so you take a battery out and plug it into that, and uh, use that to power a phone to do testing and check the current draw and that sort of stuff. Full volt output voltage, here we go. So maybe that's how we brought in regular. It's always handy to have little tools like that laying around. And there's all the various phones it has cables for. There's the ones that lists it supports. So I've been buying a bunch of bits recently for my project with these boards. I probably aren't be using these ones for it though. These are just general stock items. So these are some LM741 op amps. I realised I didn't actually have many op amps. I only had a few laying around. I didn't have much to choose from. So I thought I'd I better get some more. So I bought some more LM741 op amps. They're in these little holders and stuff. You can just see it in the silhouette there. Plastic 8 pin through hole. P dip 8, if you want to call them. So I've got 10 of those. That should last me a long time. I don't tend to use many op amps. So these days I'm also more likely to be designing with surface mount stuff. Maybe using through hole to do testing on breadboard and going to through hole uh, surface mount after that. Right, so we've got an iPhone board. 6S board. Now this is not straight. 
hopefully it's a parts one. I, I did buy a few different boards recently. It's certainly seen better days. I think I got one for parts. That's all this one is. I don't know, I bought some other ones as well. I may have bought a working one too. But the fact that it's not looking very straight makes you wonder. I need to look into this one, see which one this actually is. Yep, I just confirmed it, and that's definitely a damaged board, which I've ordered. I, the good one I purchased came with a home button as well, which is how I could tell which one's which. So this one's a damaged board, obviously, with that. So it's for parts. The idea is you get the end off it and stuff, maybe. Depends how badly damaged it is. I mean, I haven't really had a good look at it. It's got a Wi-Fi chip on it and stuff like that, so we'll see. It might be good for something. At the very least, as good as a practice board. All right, it wasn't here. Looks like an iPhone. Here we go. So this is the one I was waiting for, which is a good board. So this one's not damaged, hopefully. And it's got the home button with it as well. 64 gig board. So I can put this into a sh chassis with a dead board. And hopefully it'll work. Fingers crossed it works. Who knows? I mean, you get it from China. You don't really know what you're going to get there. I mean, maybe it's been fixed already. Maybe it's a dead board. You know, to try and set a good one. But it was quite expensive. I think it's like $100 or something. So I'm fairly sure it'll be a working board. You know, some salvage case or something. Who knows? But uh, yeah. Excellent. Not even that can't do it. So these are some 1 mega ohms, 0.1% resistors. And there's 5 in a pack. So I've got 5 packs of those, I've got 25 of them. These are fairly expensive resistors. Fairly. I mean these aren't super precision, you can get better than this. But I think the Temcos are quite good in these, which is why I got them. I don't know exactly what it was now. I think it was 25 ppm or something like that. It might be 10 ppm. But if you go much more than that, the, the price increases quite a lot. And because I'm using so many of them, I didn't want to do that. Um, I thought this would be good enough for what I'm doing. So 1206s and it's a part number info just there. It's a bag inside a bag. Inside a bag. <laughs> so this is... Oh, resistors. These are the ones which were out of stock from the previous package. I guess they got them in stock. Them. So these ones are somewhat cheaper than the first one. Caddick 1776. So these ones are, I think they're about $25 each, they're much cheaper, but these are decade resistors. So it's divided by, I think it was 10, 100, 1000, 10,000, something like that, I think it was. This gives you options, so if I make a ball with these in, that's, that's feasible because the cost is incomparable to using high quality resistors like 12 hour 6 resistors. So I make a ball with these, the cost is going to be comparable, and these are high precision, high Temco. I think this was, might be 10 ppm, I can't remember exactly now, but it's pretty good and high quality as well, so these are using multimeter stuff like that basically. But having this kind of range means you could actually have a selectable divider on a switch. So that's why I'm thinking about these ones as well. So lots of options, but I'm still going to base on my, on my Revision 2 board, which is still coming. So once my Revision 2 is done, trialed, tested, proven, then I'll probably change the resistors to this type and do a third revision board, and that might be the end of it. Something in it somewhere. That's what's in it. It's a box with more bubble wrap in it. Looks like iPhones. Yes, I've been buying a few iPhone parts recently. 64, whatever it is. Is that a 5 or 5C? I think that's 5C and that's a 5. That's how I take those. So it's a 32 gig 5C and a 64 gig 5. So I've got an iPhone 5 which has basically died. iTunes won't let me boot. It just won't work on it. The phone itself powers up and stuff like that but iTunes will not recognise it properly. And it's my own phone. I've had it since new. I can't get the thing to work. So I'll right, swap out the logic board then. I'll put a new logic board in it. And my son has got a 5C, which has lost Wi-Fi. So, well, I could just drop a new board in that and try and fix his old one, maybe. So, yeah, we'll see how we go with those. I've got still got a big package at the end there. I, I might even just tell you what that is when we get to the end, rather than opening it, because I'll just do as part of the view. And this is some iPhone protectors. Well, cases, screen protectors, and there's going to be some screens in here as well. There you go, a bunch of screens. So I've been buying spare parts recently, and well, yeah, new screens. I think these are success. I think they're all success screens. These are all packaged. So I've been buying some parts from this same supplier each time, and they've always been really happy with the quality. 
It'll be really good. Obligatory toolkits. We've got four white, one black. And I believe these are all 6S screens. So that's what I'm buying. Because that's what these are. 6S. Cool. More projects for the future. Still got five packages left yet. Heaps of stuff. So it's just some um, male banana jacks. Not got these because, well, I didn't have any. This is one, but it's not, it's not one, is there? Pack, there's a pack of one. I think there's five in a pack or something like that, is there? I can't really see. And I got these thinking that I may need these for my boards, but maybe I'll put a, um, a male connector on the board and use that as a plug-in, but I wasn't really sure at the time how I was going to do it. So I've got so many, I thought, well, you know, it will be handy having some of these. And if I don't use them now, I'll use them or something one day. This isn't a review item because it's from Fluke. Fluke sent me this. Well, it's kind of a review item. It's a sample that I asked them to send me. Hopefully they've got it right. I, I sent them, I've sent a request for six banana jacks as samples, right? Because I want to use them on project. But it's, you know, I want four, uh, three different colours. Well, we've got red, 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 hmm, red, and nothing. Empty bag. Uh, okay. Red, red, red. So I've got four. <laughs> Bag's empty. Why is that bag empty? Has it got a hole in it or something? Ah, oh, the bottom's open. Is it? No? It's a... It's a sealed bag. It's sealed. Look, there's still air in it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, that didn't cost me anything anyway, so it's good. But, so thanks for Flugum or Pomona for supplying me, me these. So I've got these ones because they're about... They're rated for a thousand volts, and I wanted them for these boards, so I can mount these on the chassis, and um, then use this to actually mount the board as well. So I'll just put the post through the board and mount it on. That will actually secure the whole lot in one piece. And the reason I got these is because they've got the shrouded ends on them, so you can use shrouded plugs. Um, normal banana jacks don't have that; they're just plain on the outside. You have to use the open, exposed pins, and of course, there's potentially a thousand volts on here. Um, I want to have the ability to use shrouded plugs for safety, obviously. So I'd probably use, use these on the input side and use a standard type on the outside. I'm not quite sure, but I did ask for different colours. Thanks a lot, Fluke Pomona, for sending me those. As strange as it is, that's a bit of a special one. <laughs> right, this one's going to be interesting. It feels like it's got lots of padding on it. My mocking's on the outside. Ah, it's a power supply. Well packaged. So it's an ED driver power supply, basically. In theory, that's what it's sold as anyway. And there's the info down the bottom there. 5 volt DC output, 40 amp max. In the motorhome where we use all this electronics gear and event management system stuff, I need to have some power supplies running in there. And right now it's a bit of a mess. I want to tidy it all up. And I just want to have like a main system supply. And I want a 12 volt and a 5 volt rail, basically, to run everything. So I thought right, I'd get some decent chunky power supplies which are way overrated for what I actually need, need to do. I only really need like 10 amps max or something. So they're well well within the headroom, that sort of stuff, so not be stressed. And I should have sit there ticking over quite nicely. So I thought, yeah, I've got a couple of these. I'll set these up as a main bus in the motorhome and, uh, and use them in there. That'd be pretty good. I don't know how good they are, I guess we'll find out. So these are 1K 0.1% resistance. Pack of five, I think I've got 25 of those as well, something like that. I've ordered some 1k and 1k05. So these are what I need for my divider networks on my boards. And here's the back, 1206s. And here's the bass box, the massive box. This is a review item from Banggood, so thank you much Banggood for sending this to me. And I'll show you what's on the box. See that? Ender 3, version 2. New 3D printer. So I've already got the original Ender 3, the original one that came out, not the uh, Pro or anything like that. The original Ender 3, which is the one I've been doing the upgrades to. You know, I put the extra motherboard in there. You know, the Big Tree Tech ones. Put a couple of those in there, and the BL Touch and that sort of stuff. And 
I thought I'd get the V2, so it looks like it's got a bit more robust system in it. Some of the mechanical aspects look better. It look like they've adopted some stuff from other people's modifications and things like that and upgraded somewhat. So I'll be doing a review on this thing, so make sure you check that out. So if you're interested in 3D printing, make sure you subscribe, click the bell icon so you get to uh, see this when it comes out. In fact, I might bring it out before this video. In which case, it's too late, you already missed it. Go back and look at my previous videos. Because <laughs> it's going to be weeks before this video comes out, but this will be pretty quick. So, yes, you would have seen this already if you've watched my channel. If, you, if you've been to my channel before, then you might have seen it. If not, if you've only just stumbled across this video and you're interested in this printer, look at my videos in the past month and it should show up in there somewhere. How's that? Here we go. Right, I've also got my 3D printing playlist, which I'll shove it in probably. So, yes, I'm not going to get out of the box right now, I'll do that in part of view. So, and I've got a lot of packaging everywhere I've got to clean up because it's a huge mess right now. Can't even get out the door. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video, always give us a thumbs up, and subscribe if you're not already subscribed and that sort of stuff. And if you want to see my voltage divider project progress, make sure you subscribe for that because that's going to go through some interesting versions. It's going to end up being quite precise, so I've got some really good ideas for that. And what I've already done so far is going to be pretty good. So, and I might, probably going to open source it, I'm not quite sure yet. I'll, no, I'm not sure, I'm sitting on the fence about that. I might open source the original version, which I already basically have because I've made the the files available to my Patreons. My Patreons can see these files and get them and make their own boards. Complete part list, stuff like that. The version 2 I might keep to myself. I might sell them. I'm not sure yet. I'm going to do those yet. So, who knows? We'll see. Alright, catch you later. Bye.